Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. In this video, I'm going to go over just a feature of the Nexion display. It's a simpler video, but I'm working on a video that's going to directly connect a Nexion display to a digital power supply, a DPS 5005. And that's taking a lot of time to develop, so I wanted to come up with something a little easier this week and as far as a video goes for me to create but yet have a little bit of fun with it. So in this one we're going to cover a connection, we're going to add some radio buttons, put a hotspot on it and even have a secret page. I have this set up with a very basic display, a 2.8 inch I believe. And we're going to start by just adding three radio buttons and a hotspot. I'm not sure if you're familiar with some of the features but you can select three at once and then you can go up here and you can line them up. So we'll line them up on an edge so now they're straight up and down. And then you can go up here and you can equally space them too. So now they're lined up and then if you go over here you can make them spread apart a little bit more. If you go over here you can bring them in a little tighter. And they stay evenly spaced. Kind of a neat little feature. And if you're not familiar with radio buttons, I'll run it in debug real quick just to kind of show you how they work. And they're just simple buttons and they just, you can turn them on or off. They have a value of a one or zero. Like this, it's zero. And with the little black dot in there, it's a value of one. And they're each independent buttons. But in like web design and in other applications, sometimes you want only one to be selected at a time. And that's what we're kind of shooting for in this video. We're going to use this hotspot to control the radio buttons. And the radio button is labeled R0, R1, and R2. That's the name of them. And then whether they're on or off, you just have the dot val. So to begin with, we're just going to work with these top two. And if radio button 0 dot val is equal to 1, we're going to set it equal to 0. If it's zero, we're going to set it to one. That's what the else is for. So we're just going to toggle this on and off. If it is set to a one, and we change it to zero, then we're going to turn R1 on. So just to make sure it works, we'll select this R1, and we'll start it with a value of zero, so we can see it turn on. So when we touch this, on press, we're going to affect this one up here, and we're going to turn this on once. We'll never turn it off again because we don't ever set it to zero. The thing about the hotspots is, is you can't see them either, so it's just right over here. You just have to click it and hope that it works. And you can see that when I clicked it, it turned this one off and it turned this one on. Now if I turn this one off, the next time it should turn this one on, but leave that one off. And that's what it did. When I click it again, it'll turn this one on and turn I will turn this one off and then turn this one on. What we're going to do is we're going to make it so it cycles through the three buttons. So we're just going to add to the code for this hotspot. And it starts off the same. So if r0.val is equal to 1, we're going to turn it off and we're going to turn on the next one down. Else if R1, if this one is set to 1, we're going to turn it off and turn R2 on. And the same thing with R2. If R2 is 1, we'll turn it off and we'll turn R1 on. And then that way as we cycle through them, as we press this hot spot, they just slowly should cycle through. It'll also error check itself because you only want one of these on at a time. So as we cycle through them, you'll notice that this one here will start on but it'll turn off, and by the time we've cycled through once, there'll only be one button on. So now as I click the hotspot, this one should go on, off, and this one will turn on. And then this one should turn off, and this one should stay on. And then it should go back up to this one, and now it'll cycle through. And what you'd want to do on your pre-initialize of the page, you'd want to turn them all off and maybe leave this one on, or whichever one you wanted to start with on and then that would continue to cycle. But having the hotspot over here, you can still affect these. And maybe you don't want that. I'll show you that next. 
So what we can do is we can layer things. So if I move this hotspot over these buttons, right now I can't select the buttons. So you know that this hotspot is on top of the buttons. But if you go up to these two arrows up here, one will bring it down, put it behind, and the other button brings it to the top. You have to make sure you have the right thing selected. In this case, we have TMO or MO selected, and that's the hotspot. So if I go down with it, now it's behind the buttons, and I can select these buttons. So if I run it in debug right now, you won't see any change. You'll still be able to affect these buttons. So it's no longer over here, so this doesn't do anything. It's only right here, so we have to click off of it and then it works. But we can still click the buttons. But we'll make one more change. We'll move it to the front and then you'll see you can't affect the buttons even when you click on them. So we click on this M0 and we bring it forward. And now we know we've got it because we can't select these to edit them. And so now when I select this one it should just click through. It doesn't matter which one you pick, and you can't individually connect them anymore. So it kind of gives you the illusion that you're selecting a button, but if you have an application where you need to have it cycle through in a certain way, this allows you to do this. But you could put anything behind there. You could put buttons behind there. You could put dual state buttons behind there. You could put about anything, and then if you click on it, it just forces the process to go in a certain order. I chose radio buttons, but like I said, it could be anything. Now we're going to move on to something else. We're going to create a secret page. We'll do this in two steps. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to add three hidden buttons in each corner. I could do four, but just for speed I'm only going to add three. So we'll add three hotspots. So we have three hotspots on here now. Well, a four if you count this one, but the three we're focused on are in the corners. And then I'm going to add a number field. We'll put it out here. We're also going to add a global variable. Up in this program.s tab, we're going to create a global variable. We're going to call it password. We're going to start it equal to zero. If you're not familiar with this page, they can only be integers. You can't put a string in here. And when we click on this, when we press it, if password is equal to zero, which is what we initially have it set to, we're going to increment it by one, and we're going to write the value in here. If it's set to any other value, we're going to set it to zero and write the value in here. We'll run debug now. The only hotspot we have coded right now is this one up here, and it should turn it to 1 if it's 0 and 0 if it's 1, so it should just toggle. So now we're going to have these next two do a similar thing. We'll go over to M2. Now for M2, if password is equal to 1, then we're going to increment it to 2, and we're going to set this value to 2 also, to whatever password it's set to. If it's not equal to 1, if it's equal to any other number, we're going to set it to 0. In other words, we're going to reset it. So you'll have to click on this one first to get it to 1, and then this one to get it to 2. If you go out of order, it's going to be set to 0. The other thing I want to show you is the password itself. We set it up as a global variable, so when I start typing in the word password, it comes up and you can see that it says global variable, which is nice. And then just plus plus. And then for M3, if it's equal to 2, we're going to add 1 and set it to 3 and set this variable to that also. So we have to increment it, but in order to increment it, you have to go in a certain order. We'll run it in debug now. So if I click up here, nothing happens because it's not equal to 1 yet. If I go here, it's equal to 1. If I go here, then it's equal to 2. And if I go down here, it'll be equal to 3. 
But if I click here again, since it's 3, it's not equal to 2, it'll reset it to 0. Also, if I go up here and set it to 1, and let's say I skip down to here, it's going to be set to 0, and it won't work. You have to go in the right order in order to get to 3. So now I'm going to show you the secret page portion. So we're going to go down here and add another page. And on this page, we'll add a text box and a button. We'll change the text to page 0. Make it so you can see it a little bit better. I'll stretch this out a little bit. Oh, make it a little taller too. And we have to change the length on this to about 15. And we'll take the message to secret page. No, it doesn't quite fit, does it? There we go. And this button, when we press it, we want to go to page. I like to do this on the release. We'll go to page 0. And so far at this point, we have no way to get from page 0. 0 to page 1. But if we take this M3 and instead of incrementing the password we simply change this to page 1 then when if this if password is equal to 2 and we press this button we'll go to page 1. So in if you were doing this for real, you wouldn't want this here to display anything, but if I press here or here, I don't go to page one, but if I go in order, it goes to the secret page, and then this just sets us back. So this is just kind of a fun way. If you have an application where you, you have an administrator role or you have something out there that you don't want everyone to have access to, you could set up a page and then just give a certain people, say, hey, yeah, you press this corner, then this corner, then this corner, and it takes you to a page where you could apply a setting or make an adjustment or something that you wouldn't want just everyday users to be able to do. I just found it kind of interesting. And you could hide these buttons anywhere. You could even increment it and have, if you had like a five page thing, you could say you have to press this button on page one in this corner, then you got to go to page two and press it in this corner. If with the global variable, you can increment that based upon which button you want to push in whatever order you want. I really always thought this was kind of a fun use for the hotspots, and I've been waiting for a week to throw this in here. And like I said earlier, I'm making a video on the DPS 5005 and a connection between it and the Nexion display, and so I thought this was a good time to do it. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up, and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.